well, tell tell me. Let's go through that strategy that that you were starting to discuss with me. Well, we can take a, a buyer that is potentially a cash buyer Correct. in Somerset, where the median sales price is around seven fifty, and they can take that and make it a down payment and and buy up in Trilogy at so, one one or one two. What we have is a, a little visual explanation of what can happen for these uh, Somerset buyers who are really wanting to buy in Trilogy, and on the the uh, uh, you'll see on the so we get an all cash buyer who's looking to buy in Somerset, and he's looking f they're looking for like a n no monthly payment mortgage situation. They'll still have their taxes, insurance, and so forth. Uh, but you'll see what that gives you is a sales price of seven fifty in Somerset with a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar down payment and no mortgage, and then. Of course, the asterisk is that they still pay their property taxes, insurance, and HOA right. dues. Now, that same person says, you know, I really, I could pay all cash and find a couple houses to buy in Somerset, but I really like the trilogy living, so how can I do it? Well, the answer is, is that instead of paying all cash on a Somerset, we're looking at doing a... $1.2 million purchase in Trilogy at the Vineyards. And the payment on that one with as a reverse is nothing. No monthly uh, payment is required. They can make a payment if they want, um, but in this case, they, they don't, don't have to, and most of the times don't. So there you have the Trilogy at the Vineyards with a sales price of $1.2 million with a down payment of $750 and a mortgage now of 450. So these are uh, giving you the, the, the difference between the Somerset all cash purchase and the Trilogy um, purchase on the, on the right side with 1.2 million. Um, so and with that down payment on the reverse mortgage, there's, there's no monthly payment ever? Uh, only if they want to make it. There is, it's, it's as long as they live in the house, uh, for at least six months and one day every year. And uh, when, when both of them have passed away, then the loan would become due. Either they move out or if they pass away, that's when the loan would come due. And when the loan comes due like that, usually we'll help the estate and the people involved with that, with the, um, getting in touch with the servicing lender and, and so forth. You usually have at least six months to a year to either refinance the house or sell the house at that point. But if the house is going up 4% a year, which is uh, 48,000 a year, the, the mortgage is right now, it's about five and a half percent, 5% in that range. So you see the, the payment right now is probably about 20, you know, 20 to 25,000 a year. So you're gonna either, the only way you're not gonna have equity is if uh, interest rate gets too high, or if the value of the house, you know, doesn't keep going up that way. Um, um, right. One four, four percent per year on one point two million, pretty modest appreciation. Correct. Way more than offset the interest. Correct. Accumulated. That makes sense. And these loans, by the way, just in in the in the in the wild chance that we end up back in 2008 where things turn around, they're non-recourse loans. So you can never owe more, more money uh, than what the value of the house is. Um, and that's, that's a, that's a biggie. Uh, that's so much in California. So we've been doing them almost 15 years now. And what's happened is that the loan has become a lot more um, easy to understand and they've made tweaks, FHA has made tweaks in the loan uh, to help the borrowers. Uh, it really is um, not quite, doesn't have the reputation it used to have. Uh, right now it's, it's uh, pretty solid. And we're starting to see the purchase become a big deal, um, especially since the amount of the loan, uh, the appraised value can go up now to nine hundred and. 70,800. So you 
you typically see that that covers most most houses that are like up to a million, you know, or even a little bit more. You can still do them type thing. So the maximum loan amount is is well, the principal limit is what they call it. So you might have that of uh, nine hundred and seventy thousand. They might lend like sixty percent or forty percent, forty percent of that number. So you you saw that what we just gave you on a million two, the mortgage was like four fifty mm -hmm. million two. So it's it's less than fifty percent, which answers your other question was you know what's the risk to a borrower that he's going to owe maybe owe more than the house is worth, and that's not likely to happen with the numbers today. So generally speaking, what do we need? Is there a guideline sixty percent down or something to? Usually, if you if you're up to nine seventy eight hundred, it's about right now. It's about a, a sixty percent down payment and forty percent loan amount. Um, so you know that's basically you know uh, you know six hundred thousand down. You know. On millions and four hundred thousand, say is is the loan amount. Okay, um, that gets you no payments. That gets you no payments. Somebody was putting down seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy it on a conventional loan. Okay, uh, and and their payments would be twenty six hundred dollars a month, and they would need to make about eleven thousand dollars a month in income. Now, in contrast, if they did a uh, reverse mortgage. Also, with seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars down, no payment. Now, instead of twenty six hundred, now you have no payment, and thirty three hundred dollars a month to qualify. Is all you need to qualify. So once in a while, we get somebody that says, "Hey, I can. If there's no payments, I can afford that." <laughs> <laughs> and then you're really looking at property taxes, insurance, HOA. Um, is all that's really needed to qualify. Um, and we routinely do these. Uh, I was in Livermore this, this weekend. They, they based the qualifying on um, the uh, uh, the interest rate, the loan amount, and the youngest borrower of the two. So typically we're looking for, you know, a 62-year-old as the youngest. We can do them with less but they won't give you as much money in that scenario. So um, let's say the husband is 64 and the wife is 61. Uh, they'll use the 61 number to determine how much they loan them, that type of thing. But one of them has to be 62 to qualify. One of them typically to do the FHA, uh, which is the, the, the best of the products, okay, needs to be 62. And if we use the jumbo, Remember, a higher interest rate, uh, a little bit less closing cost. Um, uh, that one we can go down to fifty-five. So buyers can actually have a lot more purchasing power than they. Cash buyers can, can instead of staying. Let's say somebody had only four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they said, "Well, I can't buy in Somerset, for instance." They probably could buy in Somerset with four fifty. They just do four fifty with maybe uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand for the uh, reverse mortgage. They're still not going to have a payment, but they can buy up. Yeah. Now they're at seven fifty. They get a couple thousand square feet on the golf course. That's uh, compared to yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's what we're seeing. That we're seeing that people move for three reasons. One is to be near their grandkids. Number two, to uh, get on a golf course or a lake or something like that. Um, and three big is no house payment because uh, now they just have a, a minimal payments. Um, they've got extra money to either travel or improve the house or whatever that type of thing. Everybody has their own reasons. The, the other reason that you didn't mention that's kind of interesting is uh, a lot of people – have two-story houses and so all of a sudden they want to get rid of the stairs so they want to buy to you know a somerset or a trilogy with a one story um i think the number that i read was as many as 40 percent of the people 
that's one of the reasons that they have for moving. And so it's almost like you call up the people that, that have two stories and say, hey, you want to be in a one story? I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to explain that to buyers for years and years, just the single story premium. I've even had that conversation with appraisers, right? The single story yes. is just in demand. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of those out here in Brentwood outside of Somerset and Trilogy, just a single story, three car right. garage on a nice yeah. corner lot over in Montalina. It's just going to drive a premium. We just closed one for you know almost a million one that's you know 2700 square feet and that's that's it. it it's more per square foot than a two story because it's you know people want that that single want, story in demand yeah it, it's really a normal real yeah. estate market and uh th that's the d distinction that the way people look at things you know they're instead of doom and gloom they should be saying hey look this is regular you know type stuff you know yeah no this is good for move up, move around by yeah. they can write their deal contingent, you know, they can negotiate, they can do some repairs, they can negotiate maybe a credit and yeah. see them sellers buy down rates for, for buyers. And, and that, you know, we're doing real estate again, as opposed to just the right. throwing your, your highest and best offer and no inspections and no negotiations. And that's not good for anybody. There's mortgage. What happens with the appraisal on the reverse mortgage? You have to pay the well, sometimes you have two appraisals. Once in a while, they call for two appraisals, but normally the one appraisal and whatever the appraisal is, you have to basically pay down to that amount. Um, so if you have a, in that case, it was sales price was 475 and they had, they were going to be putting down, I don't know, 250. And I think they ended up putting down 275 instead of 250 because they had to make up the difference. Still could do the deal, which is what, for them, they had already sold their house in North Carolina. This was a, a big factor, you know, um, so. But we do about 150 uh, reverses a month um, and do them well, you know, that type thing, so.